Okay. Chapter 4. The Angel of God's Presence. From the book God dictated to me, Isaiah 53, in the day of the Lord. Just as he dictated the Torah to Moses, and all the books of the prophets to the prophets. Everybody wrote their own book, for the most part. There are some exceptions to that. And uh, it's conceivable that he won't tell me that David could have written uh, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and Kings 1. Or one of the Samuels, anyway. I can't, it's been so long since I've read them. Uh, God just says, take the central character of a story, and that's who wrote it, for the most part. God says, His Spirit shall alight upon a descendant of King David in Isaiah chapter 11. A spirit of wisdom and insight, and spirit of counsel and valor, spirit of devotion and reverence for the Lord's God's Spirit is the angel of His presence. And I've already discussed that. Primarily written for the people of antiquity and the Middle Ages. We just covered that. Okay, I'm skipping that paragraph. The angel, oh, they may not have seen the prior video. Okay, this is Isaiah 63, verses 9 and 10. Uh, and I never hear the rabbis talk about it. I mean, I haven't caught a glimpse of somebody following a video that addresses the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit. In all their troubles, he was troubled. That's God, capital H-E. And the angel of his presence delivered them. Okay, in all their troubles, the Israelites, God was troubled. But it's the angel of his presence delivered them. It's because it's like they're one. I know God is one. But I mean, they're just... Somehow, the angel is hooked into God's mind, which is his presence. That's how close they are, and the thinking goes. Um, just go on. Okay. In his, God's love and pity, he, God himself, redeemed them raised them and exalted them all the days of old. So the angel's presence delivered them, but it's God who redeems, raises, and exalts them. This isn't the only place you can see that. This little run over with the, with the Holy Spirit. But they rebelled. This is verse 10. And grieved his Holy Spirit. Okay, now he doesn't actually tell you, but it's these two, these two verses go together. Uh, then he became their enemy and himself made war against them. You can see it's the same context. In one of them, they're being delivered and ordained. And in the next, they grieved the Holy Spirit. They rebelled. They didn't do what they were told. So instead of they've been redeemed, raised, and exalted, but they rebelled. And it's the Holy Spirit who is grieved. Well, they go together. That's the teachings from God to me and now from me to the Jewish people. <clears throat> That's as Isaiah 63, verses 9 and 10. The angel of his presence is a person, which Judaism does not believe to be true. If God's Holy Spirit can be grieved, he is a person. Only a person can be grieved. Verse 10 does not say that God was grieved, but that his Holy Spirit was grieved. God is not a spirit. He created all described things, including spirit and souls, that together form persons. Persons of spirit, persons of angels, and persons of human beings. God is absolute knowledge and absolute power, and he is a person. <laughs> that's what I that's his definition of, of himself the person of God says 
I am absolute knowledge, I am absolute power, and I am my creation. Which will bring other destruction if you don't have my temple built. Now guess who that is talking to me? Watchers of the video. <laughs> That's him. He said he, he, it says he spoke to Moses. Well, you think it was a one-time event? He probably did it with all his prophets. You should have seen the first time he did it with me. I was looking in the mirror. And all of a sudden, I'm not the one doing the talking. He's looking right at me. I'm looking right at me. But God's talking to me. I told him, I said, don't do that. That's, just, that's you know, that's, that's, it's just weird, okay? It's bothersome. This is Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 through 22. I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have made ready. Pay heed to him and obey him. Do not defy him, for he will not pardon your offenses, since my name and God had me type in brackets, God, like Hashem, is in him. He's in this angel. This angel is the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. He's in his spirit. But if you obey him and do all that I say, so what did he just do right there? He tells you, I speak through the angel. Listen to my angel and do what I say. Or, the angel himself can deliver a message from God. I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. He's in me too. Keep that in mind. He, well, what was he talking about? Who really went before? We never hear this angel that goes before the Israelites to protect them. He never says anything. He doesn't give you any laws, rules, commands, anything from God. You know who does? Moses. And the, because the Spirit and God are in Moses. He's a man of divine being. Yeah, he never, Moses is the only one giving rules and instructions and let's go here and let's go there and camp here. And <laughs> yeah, you never hear a word from the angel to Moses or to the Israelites. Okay, that that was all my paraf all my ad libbing, I guess. This is back to the book. The angels, which is God's writing, the angels sent before the Israelites in the Exodus is the angel of God's presence, where God dwells and moves about, as He did with Moses and the Israelites. His Holy Spirit is with Him. In Isaiah sixty three, when the Israelites greet His Holy Spirit. God becomes their enemy and himself made war against them. The reason God says that if they grieve his Holy Spirit, he himself will make war against them, is that it is a defiance of him who is in the angel, in the Holy Spirit, but also because the angel is very special to him, and he becomes angry. Oh, they're great friends. Yeah. They won't be friends with me because I'm a human being. They said, oh, you just can't be a friend with a human being. I think they're just funny with me to make me laugh. They, they, they can act friendly enough, rare for God, but uh, the angel, the spirit of God, he's always, he's always great to listen to, talk to, be with, laugh with. Although he doesn't, he doesn't laugh a lot. I do all the laughing. That is why when God's Spirit alights upon the Anointed One, it includes the angel of His presence, and where the angel is, the presence of God is, or at least close by, as revealed in visions of the prophets Ezekiel and Zechariah. There's one other bit of scripture where you can see the separation between the two. Chapter 5, a spirit entered into Ezekiel. This is very good. 